art for life's sake, which is about welcoming and understanding and creating that cultural artistic ecosystem of people in your community and whether a community is in your local region or around your country, it's a different kind of conversation that you're going to have. Welcome to Arts Engines. I am your host, Aaron Dworkin. And with us as today's guest, I am so excited to have Deborah Rutter, who serves as president of the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. Deborah, welcome to the show. Thank you, Aaron. It's great to be with you. Well, so, you know, this is obviously very special, uh, you know, because if you will, you are an arts leader's arts leader um, and, uh, and obviously leading the preeminent, you know, institution in our country that is not only an arts organization and presenter, but also a memorial. Uh, and so very, very exciting. Um, obviously, we cannot, you know, ignore that we are still in the midst of this pandemic. Uh, and I thought I would just start right off by saying, how are things at the Kennedy Center? And, you know, I've talked with a number of arts leaders. Some are like, we've had to just shut everything down. Some are like, we can't do what we always wanted to do uh, and what we are really trained to do. So I thought I would just kind of ask you, how are things and what are you able to do? Thanks so much for that question. I appreciate it. You know, we were created actually in 1958. Dwight Eisenhower as president signed us into legislation as the National Cultural Center. And I take that mandate really seriously, that we are here to serve as the nation's gathering place to represent all of America to America and also to the world and the world back to America. It is also, as you say, the memorial was created in 1964 uh, at the request of uh, Jackie Kennedy to remember her husband. But this responsibility as a National Cultural Center has been really important to me as I think about our priorities. And um, while uh, our 2000 performances have been closed down by and large, um, uh, that each year we have so many that to say that we've now done about a dozen, maybe 15 live at the Kennedy Center since September, uh, seems like a, a very large number by pandemic numbers, but very small by the National Cultural Center numbers. But what we've really been able to do is our live programming across the country through our couch concerts and Arts Across America, which keeps that sort of national presence of the arts active every single day. What I love about the center is our ability to present absolutely everything. So yes, we have the National Symphony Orchestra, the Washington National Opera. We have a huge ballet, dance, uh, theater, jazz, chamber music, all of that. But more importantly, I would say in these days has the focus on individual artists, those artists doing things independently and inspired by their environment and what's happening to them. So the couch concerts that we've hosted and Arts Across America, which has been featuring artists from Hawaii and North Dakota to Arkansas and Florida to Connecticut has really been a joy to see come to life. That's, uh, that's just awesome. And of course the impact is, is incredible. What would you say to artists out there who are, of course, many of whom are struggling, but not just struggling in general because of these circumstances, but also struggling to say, well, what, what, what even can I do? Are there things that you've seen artists do, whether reinventing or reimagining themselves or how they do their work that has made them more able to continue to practice their art even despite these circumstances? Are there any things you've seen that have really worked or would be of impact for those who might be watching? Certainly, um, we've all been seeing the art that's taking place online. But I think uh, finding the places where there's an aggregator, such as the Kennedy Center, that's gathering different types of artists doing different types of work and providing a platform for it. So that's what's really been great to 
to see a guitarist or to see a, a dancer, to see a different kind of um, uh, uh, art that comes naturally because of one's ethnic background, for instance. Uh, for us, that's been even more exciting to be able to share uh, through our digital means. And of course, everybody can do it, but by going to a place where there's an aggregator who can help with the broadcast of it, that's been really fantastic. Facebook has been our partner. And in this case, they've been a fantastic partner for us. But I will tell you one of the things that we have seen that's made such a huge difference in our own community is what it's about artists giving back, using their strength, their skills uh, to say thank you. Um, and so we've had musicians who have gone to healthcare environments, to nursing homes, uh, to, to the National Institutes of Health to offer sort of pop-up surprise concerts um, that were surprised for the recipients. They weren't a surprise for the organizers, of course, but it's been really wonderful. And the appreciation, the connection has been really, really powerful. I, and I think we've seen that in big and small ways across the country. But I think it's those small ways that's really, really important and so affirming because it happens on a one-on-one -on -one basis. You don't need to be on CNN and getting credit for singing outside of a hospital to go to your own clinic nearby and doing uh, and giving back to those frontline workers, those essential workers who need and deserve that recognition. It's also so affirming for the artists themselves, isn't it? Um, I think that uh, for us to be able to connect on a human level in that way has been really wonderful. Now, I will say one thing that we have done that I think is completely replicable across the country is that we have a big park landscape out, uh, outdoor space at the REACH, our expansion that we opened just a year ago. And we put a platform there, we put up some speakers, and we were doing free programming there. And I think that's something that with the right kind of connections in a community, everybody can do. Now the weather isn't so great in the northern part of the country right at the moment, but in the southern part of the country, I really encourage in those places where it's safe to do this, outdoor programming makes so much sense. And it's about giving back. And I think um, understanding that we're all in this together ultimately will mean that the artist as well will be compensated. And I think that's really important for those of us who are on the receiving end to remember that we need to compensate our artists. Yeah. And so when you think about this role of arts, I, I loved how you brought in the impact that artists could have relating to health, relating to wellness, um, and, and bringing that aspect. Is there a, a sense that, you know, sometimes people will debate or they'll argue or talk about, you know, well, art is, you know, kind of just this thing. It's black tie, it's opera, and then you have other people who go, well, that's not me, that's not really art, right? But it seems obviously you're overseeing such a breadth of programming. How important is that for institutions that, that aren't the nation's yeah. art center um, to think about that um, and to think about their relationship with various cultures and their community? Well, I think if you uh, were to do a random survey of audience members of a wide variety of art forms and the artists, of that same wide variety, whether it is opera or dance or hip hop or uh, contemporary music or, um, uh, you know, a folk guitar or a, a children's choir, the artists as well as the audience ultimately will use words that can be summarized in saying art for life's sake, not art for art's sake, art for life's sake. And I think throughout this pandemic, we've really come to understand that, that we need art because it nourishes ourselves. It is not a distraction. Yes, it's also a distraction, maybe. It is not entertainment. Yes, it is also entertainment. It is fundamentally art for life's sake. It's for our soul. It is for our well-being, it is for our mental health, it is for our brain health, as we've come to understand. Music is great for brain health as well. 
So it is something that we um, should be thinking very hard about as we look into the future is to understand that this is not an add on any more than going to a restaurant or buying a new outfit for an occasion is, you know, an add on. It is a part of how we live our lives and fulfill ourselves as human beings. Um, and I think it's really important also for us not to judge, you know, what is, what is great and what is less great? What is important and what is less important? It's all important. And it's all a part of expressing who we are as human beings. So that's why at the center, we've worked really, really hard at diversifying and broadening what we present at the center, because we know that, you know, a lot of people have a lot of different tastes. Um, and we're not going to prescribe that only these three or four uh, art forms are, are the ones for us all to uh, engage in. Our work around social impact has been very, very important um, uh, in over the last two, almost three decades, I will tell you. It's just that we didn't use the word social impact. Um, over 23 years ago, we started our daily free programming Millennium Stage at the Kennedy Center. And um, this was at that time called Performing Arts for Everyone. And it was through that series of programming that we were really offering the, the broadest selection of arts programming. And I just encourage you to think about what 365 days a year for 23, now 23 and a half years. That's a lot of programming. And it, whether it's military bands or, uh, you know, dancers from uh, the Peking Opera or a, a drag evening or uh, hip hop with young artists or the fifth grade from Chevy Chase Elementary doing their own version of an opera that they created every aspect for. All of that is about the performing arts. And all of that speaks to who we are as human beings. And so today we call it social impact. Um, and we actually uh, think about it in maybe a little bit of a different way, but it is that concept that the performing arts really are for everyone. So, you know, you touch on uh, such an important point, and that's just such an amazing statistic to think about the volume of performances, the access to the art that everyone has had. Um, and talking about that social impact, coming from an arts administrative and arts leadership perspective, a lot of our, our audience are leading their own institutions. Could you speak for just a minute about the importance of, of actual structure, administrative structure, right? Yeah. So you actually have an artistic director for social impact. Um, uh, of course, Bamuthi is just, you know, absolutely extraordinary. Um, could you speak to, because there are a host of organizations that simply yeah. structurally aren't built that way. Do right. you think the structure is important? I, I really do. And, and this is uh, evolved thinking on our part. I will tell you that, um, of course, we as arts organization, performing arts or otherwise, um, have always had education departments. And we have, if I may, sent that level of community engagement and out, quote outreach uh, to the education department or it's education and outreach. And I really believe that that has ultimately meant that one or the other doesn't get the same kind of focus. And let's be really clear, there's great work that's happening in the quote education area and it's really important to continue to do whether it's training or arts uh, curriculum or arts integration but those are not the same as art for life's sake which is about welcoming and understanding and creating that cultural artistic ecosystem of people in your community and whether community is in your local region or around your country, it's a different kind of conversation that you're going to have. 
And just as you wouldn't necessarily put your marketing person in charge of development or your development person in charge of marketing, and both of them are perfect and really important, but you don't always find, you might, but you don't always find the same skill base. Social impact, where you are engaging with community um, and speaking language, dedicating uh, the time to understand colleagues, really thinking about the artistic ecosystem as well as the audience ecosystem of your community. I really believe that um, it is an important dialogue that happens in parallel and I uh, treasure uh, my leads in both of those areas, but um, I would never want to merge them because I think both of them are so important. Wow, well, this is, it's truly extraordinary. And I think a great example for so many organizations to be able to look to and, and potentially emulate or see how it can be replicated for their communities. Um, so unfortunately, we're just about out of time, but here on Arts Engines, I always like to not just talk about the organization's work and all of that, but also our leaders as individuals. And just curious for you, I can only begin to imagine some of the challenges that you must face with the breadth of what you must oversee and the various organizational, artistic, disciplinary, political balances that you have to make. Um, so when you find yourself in those most difficult of times, where, what do you draw upon for inspiration, for, for solace? Um, what brings you strength when you find some of the greatest challenges before you? Well, I think you're not going to find this to be a very new or creative uh, answer. But uh, in these days, uh, what I'm spending a lot more doing is walking the dog and it is so important to have a change of scenery, uh, a change of environment, and uh, moving away completely from where you uh, spend all of your time in front of a screen, right? And um, I have found this to be, it, you know, some people say, oh, in the shower is when I have my best ideas. But the conversations that I have internally are the ones when I'm walking the dog. And the times that I go into that meditative mode is when I'm practicing the piano. So neither of those are terribly new and different. Uh, but since we can't go anywhere and we can't do anything, um, uh, you know, those are my two uh, places that I go to um, to nourish Deborah. Oh. Well, Deborah Rutter, you truly are one of the great arts engines powering human creativity in our field and such an inspiration to me and to so many. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Erin. It's really great to be in conversation. Thank you.